came here during the Ice Age period. Uh, they came here to hunt large Ice Age mammals. There was no ice down here, but it was really, really cold. They hunted them with spears made from church, which they actually found here in Georgia. They chipped it, it was easy to chip, and they would make long fluid uh, points to go hunting with. And we call them Clovis points and Balsam points. We actually found the field back behind you guys, right before the mound. They actually found a Clovis point here. It was the first one ever found east of the Mississippi River. This was a significant find in 1934. They never knew that humans came this far east in history that soon. When carbon dating came along in the 1950s and 60s, they carbon dated it to 12,000 BC. So that's how old the uh, Clovis point that we have is. They came here and they hunt the mammoths, they hunt the saber tooth tigers, giant sloths, giant bison, and, and different animals like that, and white tailed deer. Um, they would only stay in one place for two or three days and then they would move on following the different herds around. The reason the mammals came here was for the water source at the Okmulgee River. After the Ice Age and the animals died off, the only animals left for them to hunt was white tailed deer, bears, squirrels, rabbits animals that we're used to today. But they had to develop a new tool of hunting because it was easy to sneak up on the bigger mammoths with just a spear. They had to develop a tool called an atlatl. It was actually a spear thrower. It was actually stuck in the bottom of the spear and they would launch the spear. It gave it more velocity and accuracy when they were hunting and they could keep their distance from the animal. They were hunters and gatherers during this time. The women actually learned to weave different grasses together to make woven baskets and bags to gather food in. They gathered berries, nuts, and roots, um, anything they could find off the land. Nothing really changed that much till around 2500 BC, they actually started to develop pottery. They took Georgia clay and mixed it with different fibers to make the clay. They tried Spanish moss and different grass, but it was too weak to actually use it for cooking, so they only could use it for storage during this time period. Around 1000 BC, they actually started settling down in what we call base camps along rivers like the Okmulgee and Walnut Creek here in Macon. Um, they started, their hunting and gathering lifestyle stopped and they actually started growing plants. Things that we don't eat, you eat today. They grew knotweed, maygrass, giant ragweed, and sunflowers, which we actually do eat. But this was a start of gardening for them. Around 500 BC, they developed a new tool for hunting. Can anybody guess what that might be? The bow and arrow, right. This dramatically changed their lifestyle here, um, and their population just took off um, because they had a, a better food source, and, and the, you know, children would survive better when they were younger. Around 500 CE, they actually started growing three new crops, which even helped their population even more. They grew corn, beans, and squash. And this, and this uh, made this area grow with more and more people. And their pottery became stronger and they were actually able to cook in it during this time period. However, around 900 AD, a new group of people came here called the Mississippians. They came from the Mississippi River Valley and their capital was called Cahokia. They had a village of about 35,000 people. And the reason the Mississippians came here is not known. They could have came here because that area became too overpopulated to sustain that type of population at that time period and they decided to move all over the southeast. They were mound builders. They had a complex society of religion and a government. Some of the mounds that we have here in the park is the Great Temple Mound. It is our largest park mound in the park. It's 55 feet tall and we do believe this is where the chief would have lived. That's why we call it the Great Temple Mound. Um, they found that there was three structures on top of this mound in the 1930s. Um, right in front of that is the Lesser Temple Mound. Um, it's a little bit shorter. Uh, that's why we call it the Lesser Temple Mound. And then behind you guys we have the Cornfield Mound. The reason it's called the Cornfield Mound is when they dug down into the mound in the 1930s, they found cultivated rows of a crop. And they found charred corn cobs, thousands of little burnt corn cobs about this big. That's about how big their corn was back then. And it's too far away from the river for food, so it might have been used in the earth lodge for ceremonies or other reasons. So they did build mounds for the elite to put structures on, and they also built burial mounds. The burial mound is a 
funeral mound, you can see it when we're on top of the funeral mound, but it's in this direction beyond these trees. Um, it was originally 50 feet tall, so it was almost just as tall as the Great Temple Mound. Today it's only 25 feet tall, and I'll explain why it's not the original height in a, in a little bit. But they did bury their dead uh, in mounds as well. Only the elite got buried there. If you were a common person, you got buried underneath your house. Um, even the elite, when they buried them, they built a temporary house on the mound. And if you had committed murder or adultery, um, your punishment, of course they didn't have prison back then and they didn't hang anybody that we know of, um, they would punish you, you would have to sit with the body until it decomposed and once it decomposed they would clean the bones um, off and then put them in urns, uh, wooden tombs, or just in the ground um, by themselves. So that's how they buried their dead. Um, some other things that they did, they did have games here. They did like to play games. Well, you see the railroad cut in this pathway through here, this field. Um, we passed the wayside, but it shows on that wayside there, we photoshopped the picture of what it would have looked like a thousand years ago. But this would have been a huge ball field. They played two games. One is stick and ball. Does anybody know what that is today? Baseball. Lacrosse. Lacrosse. Similar to lacrosse. And they also played Chucky, which we don't really play today. Um, they would take a stone and roll it on the ground and throw spears at it. And they would try to guess where the stone was going to land by throwing the spear where they thought that stone was going to go. So this would teach the men and boys, um, and girls would play just for fun, to accuracy, especially when they were hunting. So they did play games here. And this would have been a central plaza as well. Um, one thing behind you guys I do want to mention is the Earth Lodge. How many of you have been in the Earth Lodge before? Most of you. Okay. Um, for those who have, now you guys will just have to listen to me. Um, <laughs> this is a council chamber that was used by the men a thousand years ago. The floor is original. It's carbon dated to 1015. We believe it was burnt down to the ground because they, they found charred logs and carbon dated those logs. But there's 50 seats inside. 47 go up along the wall and they get higher and higher as they go up along the wall. Maybe the more important you were in society, the higher your seat was. We, we're not sure. And then there's three seats on an effigy of a bird. The reason the bird is there, they did have a religious system. They associated different animals with their religious beliefs. Certain animals were considered bad and certain animals were considered good. Birds were considered good. So that's maybe why that's in the Earth Lodge. Some unique um, things about the Earth Lodge, it's only six inches off from being a perfect circle. Considering that it had no mathematical tools, it's pretty amazing. Um, the doorway was originally 26 feet long, and people ask all the time, were they short? We don't know the original height of the doorway, and that's why it's at the height that it's at. So you do have to bend over when you go in, and please watch your head when you're coming out, because people do bang their heads, and I've had a few people pass out, so just be careful. <laughs> Um, the doorway on October the 22nd and February the 22nd at sunrise, the sun would shine directly into that doorway and onto the effigy of the bird. Today it would do that if those trees were not there. Um, when we go in there in the mornings to unlock it on those dates, it's very bright in there, so it would still do it today if, if those trees weren't standing there. So they did have an, other earth lodges in the village. There was an earth lodge found between the Lesser Temple Mound and the Great Temple Mound. There was actually five of them found on top of each other, so they probably used many of them over many generations. Also, the mounds, I forgot to mention, they were built in stages. The Great Temple Mound was built in four stages, so over many generations, they probably built up on top of this mound. And this, the funeral mound was built in seven stages. It's at the fourth stage today. So. So what happened to the Mississippians, this is an amazing culture from 900 to around 1200 at this village site. They kind of disappeared from this area and we don't know why. Around 1300, a new group of people showed up two miles down river and we call that Lamar. And we call the culture Lamar. Um, the only difference between the Mississippians and Lamar culture is their pottery. They have very distinct patterns in their pottery. Um, they have two mounds there. One is Mound A and one is Mound B. Mound A is just like the mounds you see here. Mound B is the only spiral mound left in the United States. It's very rare. Um, we don't know if it's an unfinished mound because they would have had to use a ramp to get the dirt to the top because each basket weighed about 30 to 60 pounds. Or it 
could have been a ramp instead of a staircase going up to the top. If you guys look, I don't know how good your eyesight is, but in the middle of the Great Temple now, you'll see a bulge coming out of the grass. Um, that is the original staircase. You probably can't see it from here. I know it's there, so. <laughs> so when we get closer and when you go up on the mountain, if you go to the area, you can see a kind of a little bit of a bulge sticking out right in the, in the middle of the Great Temple Mound, facing us. So they did use stairs. Uh, one of my coworkers, he jokes and says that was the Chief's wheelchair at ramp. So <laughs> he, um, I was like, that's funny, but <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> but, but it is the only spiral mound in the United States. And if you guys do want to go, we do take trips. We're going. Um, four or five times this year and you have to go with me and I do have a sign-up sheet at the front desk if you guys want to go just ask the volunteer at the front desk and I think she knows where it's at and she can give it to you or you can just call and um, I'll sign you guys up. So what happened to the Larmour people in 1540 DeSoto came to this area looking for gold. Now we don't know if he was at the Lamar site but we do know that he did come across the Lamar culture. Um, he did baptize two of the Indians in the Old Mulgar River while he was here, and that was the first baptism that ever took place in North America. So he brought with him 600 men, 200 horses, dogs, pigs, and guns, all things that the Indians weren't used to, which he brought diseases. And this was basically the beginning of the end of their culture. He was the first and the last person to ever see the chieftain culture. So before we move on to a different area that has probably less mosquitoes. Do you guys have any questions? Because <laughs> you guys are sweating like crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. 